Hello everyone, we've got another chess game today between Leela Chess Zero versus Turbofish in the CC9 Gauntlet bonus. Again, this is 15 minutes with a 5 second increment for both sides. In this game, Leela Chess Zero is playing white, Turbofish is playing black, and you know what, I'm just going to get straight into it. It's a very nice game, and Leela kicks off with d4, uh, and it actually leads to g6, e4, and d6. Eventually, we end up with knight c3. This is a typical system that most people play against in modern defense. Bishop g7, and now Leela plays the Austrian attack with f4. Black plays knight c6 here, which is actually a bit of an unusual move, targeting this d4 pawn straight away. Usually, players play knight f6 here. And white usually folds up with knight to f3 and castles and bishop d3 is the typical move order. But Turbofish decided to attack d4. And Leela defends with bishop to e3, which is another typical move in this sort of system. Knight f6 is played, targeting the e4 pawn. Knight f3 by white, castles and queen d2. So I put a lot of red arrows here, but it's quite simple really. White's aiming to target their bishop to the h6 square, followed by h4 ideas, and maybe even at some point push e5, and of course f5 to allow the bishop to attack h6. And this is a typical attack that most players use, so they put the bishop on h6 and launch this h-pawn up, and usually try and open the rook and the queen to attack h7 at a later date. Turbofish decided to play a very defensive move e6, stopping this idea in its tracks so we can't play f5 now as white uh, so Leela just castles queenside and plays a nice developing move b6 is played by black and here Leela actually reveals her plan which is to play bishop to f2 followed by bishop to h4 uh, which is rather interesting because usually this isn't the usual plan stockfish in this position actually likes to play king b1 and if uh, bishop b7 their idea was to play e5 uh, knight g4 and push the bishop back to g1 and after knight to e7 play queen to e1 and sort of build the solid structure so maybe white's now going to play h3 g4 h4 maybe uh, and build up the attack this way but Leela didn't opt for this after b6 she played bishop to f2 so obviously trying to move their bishop to h the h4 square and I was thinking if um, what was if black goes knight g4 now well, actually, bishop h4 is just a very strong move, targeting the queen. Uh, and knight e7 is given as the best move. And then white can play h3, so kicking this knight away. It moves back, and white can maintain the attack with e5. After captures twice, knight ft5, white can play knight to e4. Uh, and white's got a very comfortable game now. Maybe c4 is on the cards, followed by knight to f6, and maybe even g4 at some point. So white definitely has some sort of space advantage in that position. In the game after bishop to f2, Turbofish decides to play bishop to b7. So Fianchettoing the bishop, uh, just developing another piece, it seems very nice. Bishop h4 from Leela, and black plays knight to e7. So unleashing this bishop on b7 to attack e4. Again, Stockfish in this position preferred the defensive approach and the solid approach, just playing bishop to d3. There's nothing wrong with this move because it develops a piece and protects the pawn. Um, but black could follow up with c5. And maybe after e5, knight e8 and queen e3 to protect the pawns. Queen d7. Uh, the computers give this position as actually dead equal. Um, and no side seems to have a major advantage. The sense is contested by both sides in this position. So, in the game, after knight to e7, Leela now decides to take on f6, so swap their bishop off for the knight, bishop takes f6 is played, and this allows white to now attack black with h4, and h5 would be a real thorn in black's side, so Turbofish plays h5 in that position, and I really like Leela's next move because it's very human. Leela just plays rook to g1 with the simple idea of launching this g-pawn up the board now, I say it's a very human move because it's a typical hacker's approach to chess. Uh, you see many players playing like this, it's uh, rather beautiful to watch. So bishop g7 is played by Turbofish and g4. And just look at this array of pawns now. All of these pawns are on the fourth rank, just suffocating black's position. Turbofish took on g4, rook takes g4 is played, and Turbofish found 
a decent defence with f5. So trying to undermine white's centre and attack the rook at the same time. It also allows black now to attack on e4 twice. Obviously white can't take on f5 because bishop takes f3 can be played. So here in this position Lilo retreats the rook back to g1. And black takes on e4. But Lila isn't too worried about this because she can easily win back these pawns. She plays knight g5, so activating this knight, two knights attack e4, and one knight is now attacking e6. In the game, I think Turbofish's move was rather odd. Turbofish now played d5. So I was wondering why doesn't Lila now just take straight away on e6, obviously forking the queen and the rook. If queen d6, let's just take on f8, and after rook takes... White can play knight to e2 to defend this f4 square. But actually, after rook f5 and bishop h3, black's the exchange down but starts getting some active piece play with rook h5. Uh, and white starts having to defend, so plays rook h1. Obviously, if rook takes h4, bishop to e6, check, and wins the rook. And after bishop f6, there actually becomes a really unusual variation with f5. After g takes f5, white plays knight g3. And black now gives up their queen with queen takes. After rook hg1, the queen is pinned against the king. So queen takes g1, rook takes g1. And actually, the materials are equal then. So the queen was swapped off for a rook, a piece, and a pawn. Nine points. So in this position, after king f7, queen f4, and c6, it's very unclear as to who is winning this game. Black's got two pieces for the queen, but he's also a pawn up. And he's probably going to win that h4 pawn at some point as well. I mean, the d4 pawn is also under attack. So again, this is a very unclear position. So maybe this is why Lila didn't go in for knight takes e6 in this position. It just leads to a lot of complications. But Lila just plays bishop to h3 and just says, do you know what, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to take that pawn at my own leisure. Um, and there's nothing you can do about it. So black just plays bishop h6. Trying to trade off this bad bishop for this really good knight. But Lila just takes on e6 and forks the two pieces again. After queen d6 though, white actually manages to gain some initiative with knight b5. So attacking the queen again rather than taking the rook straight away, which makes a lot of sense. But now we get into a position where we swap off a lot of material. Black plays queen takes f4, so winning another pawn. And white takes an f4 with the knight. I should just say if rook takes f4 here, white can just play king b1 and white's absolutely winning this position. Um, so in the game, black is forced to take with the bishop. Bishop takes f4, pinning the queen against the king. But white can now play knight takes c7. And the bishop can't capture that knight because then the queen will be free. So rook a b8 is played to move the rook away from the knight, and Lila plays rook d f1. This forces black to take the queen with check, and after king takes, rook takes f1, rook takes f1, uh, and bishop c8. The smoke has cleared, and let's just see who's on top in this position. Well, both sides have five pawns each, and a knight, and a bishop, and a rook, so it looks dead even. But actually, white has better pieces. White's got the open file for the rook. White's knight is in a much dangerous position compared to black's and white's king is actually further up the boards ever so slightly. So you could say white has a slight advantage in this end game. Amazingly we're only up to move 25 and this game actually lasts up to 100 moves. So I'm not going to go through every single move very carefully here. It would take far too long. But we'll just see what white does here. Leela plays knight e6 threatening to play rook f8 with check. So bishop d7 is played to open black's rook up on the 8th rank. And rook f6 is played by Leela. b5 now from Turbofish. And Leela just locks everything down on this side of the board. She plays b4, stopping any counterplay. After rook e8, c3, protecting more pawns, put him on dark squares. Rook c8 is played. Bishop g4 a6 and a3. So what Lilu's done is just fixed the pawns and just dump them all on black squares away from the white squared bishop. Rook b8 was played by Turbofish and now Lilu just walks the king in to king e3. 
I think if ever black plays rook c8, white will just play knight c5, and turbofish can't get any counter play on that side of the board anymore. Rook a8 is played. Turbofish just seems to be going back and forth, whilst Leela slowly gets the king up in an ideal position. Rook e8, king e5, bishop c8, and knight c7, attacking the rook and unleashing the bishop. Rook d8, takes, takes, and white plays knight takes d5. After captures, captures an e3. Leela takes with check, and this just looks like a one-end game for white now. And I do think Leela made quite a meal of it, or maybe Turbofish had a good defence. So king f7. Rook g2 and rook e8. So Turbofish has managed to get their rook behind the pawn. So Leela goes in front of it and slowly after c4 takes king d7, rook h8. Leela takes on e3, rook h5 and slowly White just gets a better position, so white takes on a6, king f4, rook c3, and weirdly, Turbofish allows white to play rook d3 and get this rook behind the pawn. I'm not sure why Turbofish didn't just capture on d5. Maybe they want to trade pieces. Uh, but after king e7, king c5, this just looks like a one position for white. b5, rook f1, rook e3. Uh, and this just is an easy win from this position. So I'm not sure why Leela took so long to win. Because I think a human player would have managed it a lot quicker. So for some reason she gave up the pawn on a4. Rook takes a4. Rook a6. And then gives up another pawn on h4. This is typical Leela though. She just likes to play with the food. She does this in a lot of games. Uh, I should just note in this position actually. We have to rook c1. King d4. Black can't take on b6 due to b7. So king b8 is forced and yeah, so slowly Leela just starts pushing this deep on now. But she does make a meal out of this. So d7, rook to e5, rook to c6. And eventually Leela's left with one pawn, but it's still a winning position. Uh, it's quite nice actually. After king e8, king c7. Leela plays this move now, rook e7, and this just wins the game. This is because after d8, there'll be this good check. And Leela can't leave the king to defend this square. So Leela's going to get queen on d8. So king b6, queen, and rook takes, king takes. And eventually we get Leela using king and rook to mate black. And it's checkmate. And Leela defeats Turbofish in a nice style in the late middle to end game. So in this game I feel like Leela had it very much under control throughout the game. Especially after h4, h5, rook g1, bishop g7 and g4. I mean this is just very aesthetically pleasing for the human player. After h takes, rook takes, f5. The complications just allow white to win the game. This knight g5 move is very nice. Yeah, and after bishop h3, uh, I think this is game over for black, because Leela could have taken on e6 if they really wanted to. But actually, I think she found out that the complications after queen takes f4, uh, and this mess here, actually leads to a one-end game. Uh, and slowly but surely wins the game, and just, and just basically moves this king up into a nice position. And there's nothing um, black can actually do about it. So it was very nicely played by Leela. So I hope you enjoyed my analysis of this game. Sorry for not going through every single move. I think it would have just been far too much and made an entirely lengthy video that was completely unnecessary. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Please drop a like or comment if you want me to look over any other games. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.